I mean, Carmichael asked about Change Talbot. He was, I read him in the Herald today saying he was nervous when he first came in. How did you, he was dropping balls like he wouldn't, he wouldn't expect to. How did you think he got on? Uh, well, I first heard about him because one of the lads who used to work for me had, had been and he'd seen like an overview really of just watching games in the league here and he, he, he just said look I haven't seen anybody that's going to get in your squad as a, an outfield player as yet he said but the one that stuck out for me was James Talbot so that was good information bearing in mind the look, the look we've had with other goalkeepers but he was nervous but he, he's it's natural, isn't it, to come in from being with the lads who are out of the Premier League and the Championship who've just got promoted and <coughs> he, uh, he acquitted himself well this morning anyway. He's been working as a postman and I think he's a delivery driver now. Is he the first guy that you've called up that has been... That's been a postman? The uh, probably, yeah. Uh, I've not... You tell me. <laughs> I don't... I don't think... I don't think I've had any postman before now. Yeah. And so, who was it that uh, took you on, Betty? Just one somebody who, who works for me. Okay. Did you remember from Sunderland or from his time at both? Was he citing Talbot's time at Sunderland? No, it's it's, uh, it's Jared Nash who works at Ipswich, but he's, he's, a, he's an Irish lad, he's an Irish, young Irish fella. And uh, wherever he'd been, he just goes out and watches games. And I, I ask everybody who goes out and watches games. If you see any of our lads, give me the heads up. So that's what he did. But he's a he's a he's a he's a really good coach and a particularly good eye of players, to be honest with you. Yeah. And have you got your radar on anyone else that you want to share? No. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, it's it's rare that either yourself or TC or Robbie, it, it's rare in a week where you're not going to a League of Ireland game, which is great. But what what have you what are you what are you taking from from each of those games? As we're looking to see if the players will, will play with us, but I mean, a lot of them are young players now, as we've seen, because Stevens took them and put them all in the 21s. Uh, and hopefully that they become the 21 players will come into the national team. I haven't seen that as yet. Jack came in and did it, and, and he trained with us. I didn't take him to Porsche because he was playing here as much as anything, and if, if I needed. Jack, he'd be fit and ready to go. Um, what am I taking from it? Just exactly that. Just see who the best players are and see where they're around. Although he's injured at the moment, um, Neil Farouge has been, been doing well for UCD and I know he's obviously in, in more on Stephen Kenny's radar now at the moment, but, but what have you made of him? Have you been able to see much of him? I haven't seen much of him. I haven't seen UCD play. But if you play in the 21s, then... Uh, I thought they played really well against Luxembourg and we'll see how they do now in the games coming up. He's been linked with a, with a move to Preston. Um, I'm not surprised at Preston, that's for sure. They're pretty good at picking up the, the League of Ireland lads. And what, sorry, are you going to tell me? Uh, no, it just it had, had, like from, from what you've seen of him with the, with the under-21s, OK, fine, there's not been much games to look at, but, you know, would he be ready, do you think, from what, what you have seen? Uh, I wonder how many, all of them have gone over, you know, uh, Dal Hogan went over and didn't go straight in the first team and I thought he was one of the better players, but he's now doing well up at Hibs. It's a, it's a tough old league, the Championship. You know, if you go in there and take that by storm coming from the League of Ireland, then you're doing well. But it's a bit of a learning curve for them, there's no doubt about that. We'll see. We'll see. We, we, all, we all take them full of hope and expectation, you know. Uh, it doesn't work out for all the lads, I hope it does if he gets his move. Thank you. We were saying about Patrick Bamford that he said he didn't really want to talk until the championship season is over. Is that another conversation you've had with him or do you think that might be dead in terms of declaring? Uh, I think Patrick has to give me a call if he wants to. Yeah, I think that's the way it runs now. Bearing in mind all the conversations I've had with him, I left it with him. If you're ready, to, if you want to do it, give me a call. So I'll wait for the call. The length of time it takes, I might be, uh, I might be out of here before that happens. Are we to take Nathan Redmond's inclusion in the England squad as game over in terms of complaint for us? Well, actually, I got a, I got a text message from Robbie. I was actually playing golf, and he said. Uh, 
that, well, that's Redmond's gone. <laughs> and I sent the message back, Dick, question mark. <laughs> Knowing full well who he meant, of course. And he said, uh, no, Nathan, he's been picked for England. I said, well, thank fuck it's not Dick. I mean, so, he's, so long as he's not going. So he sent me a whole lot of laughing faces back. So that was, uh, excuse my language, but I can't say any other way because that's what I said. Yeah. I can't do it about it, can I? It was, you know, why, why? It was like ruining me golf telling me. No, it was just funny. So Dick's delighted, I said that. He's really full. He's now the legendary kit man, even more so than he has been before. Dick's still here, just to kind of clarify. <laughs> Dick is very much still here, yeah, he's, uh, it wasn't him that was called up for England. <laughs> Mick, just a word on Max O'Leary, um, is he a player who you've been scouting for a while, or have that been a full event that you've I was made aware that he qualifies for us, and of course, as usual, when I tell Alan Kelly, he's already seen him two or three times, he knew about him. Uh, he was on his radar, and he came and he did well. So he's had a good season with Bristol City. I think he, he uh, he's quite well thought of. And just on Alan Brown as well, um, it seems like he can't really catch a break at the moment at the international level. Um, at this point for him, like, he won't be in well this this international. I am, yeah. Disappointed for us because he's, uh, as I said before, he was the one I was waxing lyrical about that he'd scored 12 goals and. I was doing it about Ronan Curtis and Callum O'Dowder. They'd scored the goals and none of them turned up for the last games. Uh, so having turned up Alan, he, I think it's just a cumulative thing really with injuries that he's had. And it's just a, it's a tiny calf strain, but it would keep him out for the games. Uh, and I'm sure Preston will want him fully fit for the start of the season. Um, you mentioned earlier about having met him in Portugal and the whole band between the players. You know, can be so positive within the camp. Um, how have you found fostering that spirit in the international arena compared to now this time in comparison to last time? Is there any difference? Uh, I don't think so, no. No. With players, there's a different. Um, I, think, I think the lads don't, they're not that bothered about it going out as much as we were, that's for sure. <laughs> maybe all the mobile phones, that's, uh, that's maybe curbed the enthusiasm for going out, I don't know. But does that in itself create more of a challenge of the way these things are going for them to get to know each other better? They've got to be able to go out. The, the young men, they've got to be able to go and enjoy themselves in my view. And, and I'm, I give it my blessing because I thought it, was, it helps wherever you are. Um, but you do it on the training ground, it's how, it's how the training goes. Andy Little, the warm-ups that he starts and all the fun that creates, that banter that you have between each other, the, the training the training games, the banter between the, the staff and the players, it's on a daily basis. You don't, there's no magic, there's no just one magic formula that creates that wonderful environment. But I, do, I always think it's uh, the better the environment, the more you want to come in. I used to love coming in. It was great. See the lads. Big Jack was great. Always a bit of fun with him. Um, and I, if I can ever create that atmosphere, which I try and do, then it's great. It helps people play well, I believe. Nick, just on what you were saying about James Lagerberg earlier, I remember last year Roy Keane had said that Nicky Boat was only took him off to Jimmy Dunn. But to what extent can you rely on, I suppose, your own network of coaches or former players to? Oh, lots. I mean, I, I, I don't think I'm the guru of football, by the way, that knows all the players and only I can see them. I believe that everybody's got an opinion, but some opinions I just take more than others. And I've, I've worked with this guy and, you know, if TC comes and says to me, or Lids or Robbie or Jared, who it was, who I know, absolutely. But I'm, I'd, I'd have a look at them, whoever came and said it to me. So I get, I get loads of people come and tell me, oh, this fella can play. I used to, certainly at club level. I think, well, OK, did, where's he playing? What's he done in his career? Let's, let's just analyse him first. Has he, has he played for any decent club? Is he just, a, how old is he? Is he a forward? Has he scored any goals? How much does he play? How much, what's the percentage of time he spends on the pitch? And we can find all that out from, uh, from our uh, networks. No, no doubt about that. Uh, from Y Scout and what have you, 
and then we'll go and have a look at him. Somebody comes and says, oh, you better have a look at little Johnny up the road, and, he's, and we find out, well, he's only played one game in the last two seasons, he's a centre forward, he's never scored a goal, then we're not going to go and look at him, quite clearly. But, you know, information is king, by the way. You just, you go to games and ask other scouts, and they're all delighted to tell you about the players they're watching. It's brilliant. You know, so who are you watching today? And they'll tell you. So it's great. Information is the best. And just on Halibut, and you mentioned Jack Byrne earlier, the fact that there has been such a debate about the calendar in the league round, the fact that they're... I'm sorry, about what, sorry? About the, the fact that they're in the middle of a season right now. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned Jack has played games for Sean Rovers. Is that a hindrance on you calling him up, that they might be... Like the fact that Jack is involved in the role, isn't there? No, at all. That, 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 my not calling him up didn't base it on that decision at all. It wasn't based on that. I didn't call him up because I didn't want to call him up. And I phoned him and told him that he wasn't in this squad. But I was acutely aware that he had been playing and that if I needed to call him up, I'd certainly be playing his games. And if I wanted to call him up then for this week's game, he's fully fit and he's ready to go. Mick, do you think the fact that Ireland wanted Nathan Redmond influenced England's decision to call up Nathan to the latest squad? Well, if he did, they sent him home. But is there a sense there that... The no, I'm not being funny about it. They have. They've told him he's not in the squad. So if it was a panic mode that we might be... Talking, no, I, I don't think so. Do you think there's a little bit of a battle going on? No, there? I think Nathan Redmond wants to play for England. He's played, he's played for England yeah. in the past and I think... He, he wanted to play for England and he was hoping he'd get the call up. But you know, he's got the he's got the cheap date in the background, me, so so that before that's just the way it is. I think there's you know, there's another option, but I do believe his his real option is he wants to play for England, who he has played for at under twenty one level. And good luck to him. That's, 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 if he wants to do that. He got called up. I'd, I've no idea whether that's the case. But if it was, that was their modus operandi, I'm sure that I kept him in the squad and stuck him on in one of the games. Hey Mick, do you have any uh, other injuries other than Mark Travers, Luke Connell and Adam Brown? Just a few that are just carrying little things, but hopefully they'll be okay. Nothing that I'm worried about now. You calling anyone in to replace Luke? No, I've got, I'd, I'd have had 26 players going. So no, I've got plenty of players. If I if I take what I've got, I'll have to tell two of them they're not on the in the squad anyway. Mm. No, Mick, how do you fancy to win the Champions League final tonight? Based on my vast superior knowledge on football, <laughs> I tip Leeds to win. <laughs> 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 I tipped Ajax to win. I don't bet, but you know. And uh, I didn't fancy Liverpool at all either against Barcelona. <laughs> so, based on that, my vast superior knowledge of everybody else, I have no idea, really. Who do I want to win? I've just said that there. I'm, I'm, my wife's a Liverpool fan of years, my son is, my son's going to the game. Uh, and I'm a good northerner, to be quite honest, so I'd take Liverpool. But who I think... I'm glad I don't bet, I tell you what, I'd be <laughs> I'm not allowed to, but I'm glad I don't anyway. Is that OK? Yeah, that'd yeah, be... Thank you very much, Absolutely.